Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to talk more on graphing tangent and cotangent functions. So in the last video, we talked about the basic tangent and cotangent functions. This time, we're going to talk about doing some extra things to them, like having some changes in periods, some horizontal and vertical translations, and so forth. Okay, so let's just jump right in. There are a few steps that we need to follow in order to graph these. And so first of all, we want to start with graphing just the basic y equal a tangent bx or y equal a cotangent bx, just like before with the sine and cosine function, except this time, uh, once you graph those, then you will apply the horizontal and vertical translations. And we did that with the last ones too. Um, the only thing that's different here is that the period of tangent and cotangent is different. So we wanted to find the new period of the sine and cosine. We took two pi and divided it by b. Well, since the period of tangent and cotangent is pi, then when you want to find the period of the new period of the tangent and cotangent function, you will take pi and divide it by b. Also, you will take bx, which is the argument, the thing inside of the tangent or cotangent, and you'll set it equal to negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 for the tangent function, or you'll set them equal to 0 and pi for the cotangent function. Now, these values are where the asymptotes happen at the original tangent and cotangent function. So when you do this, you're finding your new asymptotes, okay? Once you find your asymptotes, you sketch them, you take the period and divide it into four equal intervals, which we did before. You take your period divided by four and you make those intervals that space. Then you evaluate the functions and you can use values from the original tangent and cotangent function so you evaluate them and then you sketch a curve through those points. So let's look at a couple of examples where we walk through all of these steps, okay? So first we want to graph y equal negative 3 tangent of 1 third x. And so in order to graph this, first of all, we I noticed that there's an a, which before changed our amplitude, but we don't have an amplitude with tangent and cotangent. But that affects your y values, that negative 3 right there. So that is what you will multiply your y values by. And then also this number in front of the x affects our periods. So that's our b, and that's our 1 third. So the first thing we'll do is find our new period. Our new period is found by taking pi, because that's the old period of tangent, and dividing it by 1 third, which is the same as saying pi times 3 over 1 which is 3 pi. My screen is going crazy. That's 3 pi. I don't know why it's doing that. Well, I still don't know why it's acting up, but I think it's going out. All righty. So that's 3 pi. That's our new period. Okay. So next we want to find our asymptotes. And our asymptotes will take the, um, the argument, which is the 1 third x. And we'll set it equal to negative pi over 2 because that was our vertical asymptote at tangent. And we'll also set it equal to pi over 2. And this is going to give us our new asymptote. So in order to solve for x, we're going to multiply both sides by 3. The 3 is a cancel here. We'll get 1x, which is just x, is equal to negative 3 pi over 2. And then we'll have x here, or multiply by 3 here. The 3 is a cancel. And we'll have x is equal to 3 pi over 2. So these are our new asymptotes, a negative 3 pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So we're going to grab our tangent function in between those two values, okay? Now, we want to take our, our period and divide it into fourths. So our period is 3 pi. If we divide it by 4, that gives us 3 pi over 4. And so that's our new interval length or our length between points, okay? So in order to figure out the next point after negative 3 pi over 2, I have to add 3 pi over 4 to that. In order to add those, I need a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply negative 3 pi over 2 by 2 over 2. And that gives me negative 6 pi over 4. So negative 6 pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 4, that gives me negative 3 pi over 4. So that means my second point will be at negative 3 pi over 4. So I'm going to go to my next page because I have a blank chart on there and I'm going to start writing these values in there. So I know my first point is negative 3 pi over 2. Now I know my second one is negative 3 pi over 4. 
I know my last one is three pi over two because those were the two new asymptotes. So I'm adding three pi over two to three pi over four to each of those. So I just add a negative three pi over two plus three pi over four, and I got negative three pi over four. If I add three pi over four to negative three pi over four, that gives me zero. And if I add three pi over four to zero, that gives me three pi over four. And so that gives me all of my uh, five values that I want to graph. So that gives me all the values between one period, okay? So the next thing I have to do is I have to change each of the x values by this negative 3 that's being multiplied. So if you think about the original values of the tangent function, the originals were undefined, negative 1, 0, 1, and undefined. The original y values of the tangent function that we graphed. And that was at pi over 4, or negative pi over 4, 0, and pi over 4. Okay, the ones in the middle and the ones at the top were negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, the, the ones at the top and bottom. So it's changing by negative 3. So what I need to do is multiply each of these values by negative 3. Well, undefined can't multiply by anything, so those undefined values are going to stay undefined. But if I take negative 1 and I multiply by negative 3, that gives me a positive 3. If I take 0 and multiply by negative 3, I get 0. And if I take 1 and multiply by negative 3, I get negative 3. And so this gives me my value. So I'm going to put these values on my chart, negative 3 pi over 4, because that's 0. Negative 3 pi over 2 would be here. 3 pi over 4 would be here. And 3 pi over 2 here, all right? And negative 3 pi over 2, I have an asymptote. At 3 pi over 2, I have another asymptote. At negative 3 pi over 4, I'm at the point 3. Then I'm at 0, 0. And at 3 pi over 4, I'm at negative 3, which is here. So my graph ends up looking like this. It curves off in that window. And remember, it repeats that in each new window, okay? Okay, so now you can also check your graph in decimal. So I want you to know how to do it by hand, but then you can also use your graphing calculator to check it. So I'm at desmos.com forward slash calculator. I've typed in the function here. And one way you can check your points is by going to this little settings button right here and clicking on the table. So I want to convert this to a table. Now, when I convert it to a table, it has standard numbers, integers in it, but you can change each of these values that you want in there. So I want to change this to negative 3 pi over 2, and then negative 3 pi over 4. Leave that as 0, 3 pi over 4, and 3 pi over 2. And remember, I'm just typing in the letters pi in order to get the pi symbol. And you can look in your chart and see that we have the same exact values that I had in my chart that we found. Undefined 3, 0, negative 3 and undefined okay and you can see this is the graph you can zoom out and look at it or you can zoom in but this is the graph over multiple periods that's what the graph look like okay now if you have any questions about anything related to graphing this problem don't hesitate to put it in the comments if not let's keep going so now we want to graph a cotangent function. This is y equal negative 2 minus cotangent of x minus pi over 4. We want to first look and notice what's happening here. There is no number in front of the x here, so there is no change in period. There isn't a number in front of the cotangent, but there is a sign. So the number that usually changes the amplitude and the sine and cosine, um, it changes the y values. We won't change the y values by a number, but we will change them by a sign. So now what does this minus 2 do out here? If you remember from the previous, uh, one of the previous videos, the minus 2 makes it move down 2 units. And then this minus pi, pi over 4 inside the parentheses, it does the opposite because it's inside the parentheses. It makes it shift to the right pi over 4 units, okay? So what we want to do here is there is no new period to find. So what we want to do is we want to look at the old cotangent function, or the original cotangent function. The original cotangent function, we use the point 0, pi over 4, 
power over 2, 3 power over 4, and pi. Those were the values that we had. And then the first and last values were undefined. So this is the graph of y equal cotangent of x that I'm putting the points in for. At power over 4, it was 1. And then at power over 2, it was 0. And then at 3 power over 4, it was negative 1. Okay. And I wanted to look at those because now I want to take this negative here and I want to change each of those y values. So now let's look at y equal negative cotangent of x. So all of our all of our x values will stay the same. 0, power over 4, power over 2, 3 power over 2, I mean 3 power over 4, and pi. But we will multiply each of those y values by negative 1 in order to get co negative cotangent of x. And that's a negative sign, okay? Well, undefined stays undefined. Positive 1 becomes a negative 1. 0 times anything is still 0. Negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. And pi still stays undefined, okay? So those are our new y values. So now we want to apply these transformations, this negative 2 and this negative power 4. So the negative 2, since it shifts all the points down to, that's going to affect the y value. So we will subtract 2 from each y value. Well, undefined stays undefined. Negative 1 minus 2, I'm doing this negative 1 right here, minus 2 is negative 3. 0 minus 2 is negative 2, and 1 minus 2 is negative 1, and that bottom one stays undefined. Anytime it's undefined, it's going to stay undefined, okay? Now, this minus power of 4 shifts the graph to the right power of 4. So that means each x is going to change by adding power of 4 to it since we're going to the right. So I'm starting with this 0 here. 0 plus power of 4 is power of 4. Power of 4 plus power of 4 is 2 power of 4. 2 power over 4 reduces to power over 2. Power over 2 plus power over 4, you will have to find a common denominator. You will multiply top and bottom by 2. And that will give you 2 power over 4 plus power over 4, which is 3 power over 4. So this becomes 3 power over 4. 3 power over 4 plus power over 4 is 4 power over 4, which is pi. And then pi plus power over 4 will end up giving you 5 power over 4. So those are your points that you want to use in this graph, okay? So those points, I'm going to put them in my chart here. Those points are going to be pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi, and 5 pi over 4. And then that's undefined, undefined, and then negative 3, negative 2, and negative 1. So this is what we want to graph. So we'll start here. I'll say this is pi over 4. This is pi over 2. This is 3 pi over 4. This is pi. And this is 5 pi over 4. At pi over 4, we have an asymptote. At 5 pi over 4, we have another asymptote. At pi over 2, we're down here at negative 3. At 3 pi over 4, we're at negative 2. And at pi over 4, we're at negative 1. And so if you sketch a curve, uh -oh. you sketch a curve through those points, your graph ends up looking something like that over one period, okay? Okay, so I'm back in desmos.com and I've typed the function in here, negative 2 minus cotangent x minus pi over 4. And again, you can, oh, I wasn't trying to zoom out like that. But again, you can check your points by going to this little um, settings button and then typing in your values. So I entered in my values quickly, really quickly. And um, I have pi over 4, pi over 2, 3, pi over 4, pi, and 5, pi over 4. Remember, you can type those in and use pi for pi. And you notice I get the same values that I had in my chart, okay? So this is how you can check your values. So if you have any questions whatsoever about how to graph the tangent or the cotangent function, please put them in the comments below and I will respond. If this video made sense to you and you liked it, please hit that thumbs up button for me. And if not, I will see you all in the next video. So thanks for watching.